we've got quite some people joining already. Good to see. Thanks everyone for coming. How are y'all doing? 100, good. Yes, I like that. Um, all right, all right. I'm happy you're here. Um, I'll start off by mentioning that today's Twitter space, as always, will be recorded. Uh, so just know that uh, if you're going to be asking a question, which we hope you will be at the end, we're doing a short Q&A. Um, just know that you'll be recorded. So just make sure you're OK with that. Um, other than that, uh, as always, we love your interaction. Um, so we'll be joining or uh, I'm sorry, we'll be sharing um, X metric form with you throughout the talk uh, and you can fill it in and we'll drop you some X metric as a little reward for your participation. Uh, also, make sure to join on your phone if you're on a desktop. Um, on a desktop, you can just listen to it. But if you want to share emojis, ask questions, uh, speak, then you have to be on your phone. So just make sure. Uh, there's also a nice feature to have captions. If you prefer reading over just listening, uh, you'll find it in the settings. Um, what else? What else? What else? Um, yeah, that's about it for announcements. So I'll introduce myself shortly. Um, I'm Helix. I'm the growth lead at Metrics DAO, and I focus on content, events, and partnerships. Uh, and as I've said before, we'd love to have your questions at the end, but you can also drop them in the chat. So in the right bottom corner, there's the little uh, text box. If you click on that, you can just drop your questions in the comments and we'll get to them too. Um, but other than that, we of course love you to have you on as a speaker. So you just request to speak. I'll grant it to you and you can ask your question live. Um, so that's about it. Um, I'm gonna introduce our guest now, which is Twinfin. Uh, she has a long career and a lot of experience in decentralization and also specifically Web3. Um, right now, she's a lead researcher at Nooks, but she's also a contributor at many DAOs and involved with many initiatives, including Spore DAO, Bankless, uh, I'm sorry, Bankless Korea, Kernel, and Nons. Um, so without further ado, give it up with the emojis. I want to see some claps um, for our guest, Twinfin. Uh, welcome. How are you doing? Hello, good. How are you? Uh, thanks for having me. Good morning, everyone. Or good night. <laughs> GM, GM. Uh, wherever, wherever you are in the world, there's always someone who for who it's morning. So, GM. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, and for you, it actually is a good morning, right? Because uh, where yes. are you at the moment? I am uh, in one of the islands in Philippines, and actually roosters are uh, making some noise outside because it's 7 a.m., so GM for me. I thought I heard them. I was like, <laughs> I won't say it. Maybe it's just me. I'll, that'll be weird. Uh, okay, so I'm actually hearing roosters. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I tried to mute myself when I'm not speaking. Oh, no worries. I don't think it's a big deal. Um, so you're at your co-working right now? Yes. All right. Um, it's technically the best internet place in this island because, well, this is probably too much information, but the island <laughs> itself doesn't have a <laughs> landline. I just found it, like, uh, interesting. Uh, so it's basically a big hotspot the entire island is relying on. So, yeah. Awesome. And this is the place you usually work from when you work for Nooks? Uh, yes. So I work remotely for Nooks. Um, and yes, for 
for the sake of the internet, uh, I work here. Actually, a lot of the um, digital nomads were, were making like, uh, why are you going there kind of faces when I said, oh, my next destination is the Philippines. But I <laughs> now I know why. Uh, but yeah. So if I ever end up like, if I ever disappear from the Twitter space, maybe it's a, a good warning sign for others who are considering Philippines as their next nomading <laughs> destination. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. That's good to know. Uh, I hope you'll stay online for the Twitter space. Um, Hopefully, yes, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but um, no worries. Uh, can you tell us a bit about what you're doing for Nooks? Because you're the lead researcher, right? Yeah, sure. Um, so uh, as a little disclaimer, I just started this job. It's been uh, it's my first month. So Congrats. I'll be speaking... Uh, Thank you. Uh, what I should or plan to do um, to well, actually to give an uh, introduction about Nooks. The name itself is N O zero X, so it's No Zero X, which is trying to say like, so for our wallet, it's not just some hexadecimal string. It it uh, it has and supposed to have much more meaning to it. It's just that not all the on chain data is like they're not all signals for humans. So Nooks is trying to give more context and make it into human readable signals, uh, which is by creating badges. So, um, so Nooks team started as like, oh, we can do something more with on-chain data. We should uh, give more meaning to our uh, wallets. But uh, like, oh, so what? What can we do? Maybe we should make some non-transferable tokens. And then the SPT came on. So. We were like, oh, maybe we're doing something right. Uh, let's explore this more a bit. So we're building reputation. We're trying to build like a reputation layer or a Lego for for the Web3. Um, yeah. Uh, and there I'm trying to uh, do as a researcher, like uh, read the terrains of the market, like trying to map the space and like try to see where we're going, where we are right now. Uh, and those kind of stuff, maybe create contents, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. So uh, can you give me a couple of examples where, what you could use Nooks for? Like, okay, reputation layer, but what what does that mean, like, concretely in practice? Oh, yeah. So uh, maybe, uh, maybe people are more familiar with, like, Galaxy or Layer 3, kind of uh, quest-based uh, reward badge, Kind of platforms, mm -hmm. um, but Nooks is uh, just focusing on on-chain transactions. So whatever you did on-chain, like you participated, like you are the Gitcoin donor, like for more than three times, five times kind of stuff, and then you can get the SBT, uh, mm -hmm. soulbound uh, tokens uh, about this, uh, about your uh, achievement or what ha what your on-chain uh, actions have been. Like uh, you were like. There's actually a, some kind of flex kind of badges. Uh, uh, like, for example, you were an Ethereum uh, you, uh, before the DAO hack. So you're like a real, you experienced and you survived such a big uh, crypto event. Maybe we can also have like a oh, um, mm. FTX survivor badge as well. Maybe oh, later that's on. Cool. But, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, but we're, uh, what differentiates us is that we only focus on on chain activities rather than right. like, uh, I participated on this Twitter space, which is also a great achievement um, and contribution, maybe, but not necessarily on chain. Right. So, yeah. Okay, I see. Yeah. I see. Great. And your work as like re, uh, lead researcher, what what does that really entail? You write articles, you research the space. Um, can you tell us a yeah. bit about your day to day? Yeah, yeah. so I guess uh, all of what you mentioned, because uh, we're still very early stage. It's like we launched like several months ago. Uh, so we're still learning about the space, like the digital identity or decentralized identity space itself is uh, relatively young. So mm -hmm. we're trying to study as much as possible at that. And then we also have a mirror, but not so many articles yet. So I'm trying to publish like, oh, what are the problems we want to focus on trying to solve? 
uh, and stuff like that. Okay, interesting, interesting. Um, all right. Uh, what about? So I'm I'm wondering how you got to this point, right? So um, yeah. let's start at the beginning, like real quick. What is your background? What did you study? Was it related to anything you're doing today? Uh, okay, so <laughs> I majored in business administration, so not so much relation there. Mm -hmm. uh, I did interns at uh, like a... <laughs> Very random places like a uh, steel manufacturer in Korea, because steel manufacturing is a big industry in Korea. Uh, did some like strategies and finance stuff there, and also like a think tank in Washington D.C. Uh, and then after I graduated, I started working for uh, uh, as a regional sales manager at a convenience store franchise. Uh, yeah, so. Actually, not nothing much crypto about it, but no, yeah, that, that was that was, uh, that was the start. <laughs> so, how did you get started? Uh, yeah, yeah. So, as I mentioned, I was a sales manager at uh, different uh, convenience stores. Um, so, I basically what I do is I go around like visiting those because I'm in charge of like 14, 16 different convenience stores. So, I uh, make a visit and like consult with this store owner and stuff. But the uh, staff members, uh, I was actually at the hype of kimchi premium. If anyone knows what kimchi premium is, it's actually, um, <clears throat> so back in 2017, it was uh, like 20% more expensive to buy Bitcoin in Korean crypto exchanges. Uh, that was like before uh, tax. So uh, yeah, that's kimchi premium. So like everyone was crazy about it. And so the staff members at the convenience store uh, wasn't doing their work. Like, wasn't they were cashiers, but they weren't really like responding to the customers because they were too busy looking at their cell phone at the Bitcoin price. So I was like, "Hey, well, what are you doing?" And they were like, "Oh, you should buy this." And I was like, "What is that?" And they were like, "Oh, you should buy this." And actually, no one could answer me uh, about what that actually is. So I thought, I just thought that it's a big scam that my national, our national economy is going to collapse because no one is like doing the actual work and just trading this, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I just like decided, oh, it's a scam. Um, but yeah, my interest actually grew after the burble burst, uh, burble burst because, um, it's that's a scan it's supposed to die and like no one should be interested in it anymore um but i could see like just uh small articles uh, about it so that's when i got interested like oh maybe it's not a scam and i read read some uh articles and stuff about it but i couldn't really understand anything mm -hmm. and that was actually the like one of the most interest, uh, intriguing parts because like if you read some random stuff, you can understand like at least one or two percent. Like, oh, maybe it's talking about this. But when I read stuff about Bitcoin, I couldn't understand anything. So I just decided, oh, maybe I should go work in this place because that's probably the fastest way of learning about this. Yeah. So I just, um, yeah, and actually... <laughs> This is this is uh, another random part, but the fact that my current job wasn't so interesting would, uh, I guess, it helped a lot for me to just jump over to like whatever that was that I thought it was at the time. So yeah, so I just quit my job and uh, <laughs> actually I did something kind of stupid because I just typed blockchain into the job searching platform. And I'm pretty sure that there were like tons of scam projects, um, but I was very lucky. I was uh, in uh, in the uh, safeguard of the crypto guard, crypto god, and uh, I landed on some um, rare non-scam crypto accelerator <laughs> slash VC, <laughs> which is really rare. Uh, was rare back in the days in Korea. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I was. Yeah, that's how I started my career in Web three, I guess. 
a while so and i i think the the thing that stands out to me that i find so interesting is that you say that okay it all went it all went down but it did not go to zero like it did not die therefore there must be something there because it collapses but it stays alive so there must be something to it i think that's such a interesting and intelligent take on it and also kind of brave to like jump in right at the moment like you got interested the moment it all collapsed and that's like that that really set you apart from the pack for me so that's very interesting um okay so t tell us about um okay what, what was next for you in this space how did it go from there Oh uh, yeah, so as as you mentioned, uh, I guess maybe this is like a personal trait, but I think I'm more vulnerable to the heat of FOMO than the like bare cold winter. Because uh, actually, I started at like a, like early winter of two thousand and eighteen. So actually, it was harder for me when there was like this summer and all the price booming. That was actually harder for me, but yeah, anyways, that's, uh, yeah. So to go back to your question, um, yeah, so I started um, as like a project manager for the accelerator. Um, and actually it was quite challenging for me because I didn't, as I mentioned, I didn't know like anything about crypto. Like I didn't know, I barely knew the difference between Bitcoin and Ethereum. So it was hard for me to do the actual work because I was also not in the position to say just, oh, I don't know, because, well, I'm supposed to be working at the accelerator, <laughs> so I should be accelerating. I, I shouldn't be the wait, you know? So, like, all I had to, all I did was, like, from the moment I opened my, I opened my eyes uh, till I went back to bed, I just, like, read and, like, watched crypto YouTubes, so I just spend all of my time on studying crypto, uh, which was both stressful, and uh, but I did learn a lot in a short period of time. So, um, yeah, that's uh, that was the experience in the accelerator. But there's also the other part um, called nonce, which is the uh, uh, which which is what the miners look for, uh, the nonce value. Um, but that's the name of the crypto-based um, co-living, co-working space in Korea. So it's a big crypto community. Mm -hmm. And yeah, NOS just made the whole experience much more enjoyable. Um, how so? Ah, so <laughs> actually, so how I met Nance, uh was like, so one of the co-workers in the accelerator was already living in Nance, And every time he like told me about this place, it just sounded like some fairy tale. Because <laughs> they were like, yeah, it just, um, yeah, I don't know if there are like comedy uh, series about um, uh, university dormitory life in uh, other parts of the world, but there's a big one in Korea. So it just sounded just like that. Like uh, college dormitory kind of uh, dramas. But yeah, so I just thought, oh, maybe it's um, it's just a fairy tale, which is not for me. But I got to know this crypto uh, study group, uh, which I'm still involved in. It's called Crypto Turtle. Um, as in like the turtles are wise. Um, Mm. But yeah, it, it was happening in Nons, and actually Nons is uh, sitting on top of the hill in Gangnam, Korea. So it's really, really a hike. So after I uh, participated once in that uh, study group, I just decided like, oh, I can't hike this anymore. So I just should live here. So that's how I started my um, living in Nons. I just thought that I'd live there for like three months or so because um, I wouldn't be so brave to like start living with all those other people because there are like four four bed rooms um, and stuff. So it's too intimate for me. It sounds too intimate for me. 
But actually, I ended up living there for more than two years, and then I did work for Nons operations team for about a year. So yeah, I guess I really enjoyed the journey. Wow, yeah, it sounds like it sounds so cool to me personally. Like I'd love ex an experience like that, and I can totally relate to what you say, like that that college dormitory experience. Like where I'm from, we don't really have that. But I always saw that like from American movies or whatnot. And I was like, oh, man, that seems so cool to like live in a place where like everybody's like doing the same thing and you're all right, involved right. and you know yeah. everyone and, and you have parties and you do stuff together. Um, the way you describe it to me kind of sounds like that. Yeah. So actually, for me, uh, crypto is kind of like cult because uh, especially in Korea, there are a lot of skepticism, like, oh, you just want to make a lot of money, the kind of um, perspectives. So we, I guess we do get lonely because we just want to, like, explore this, this crypto world and stuff. Uh, but so it's a natural that we flock together and we use the word tribe a lot. It's so like it feels like you find your found your own tribe. So yeah, it's interesting because like anytime uh, you have something you want to talk about, you just you you can so easily find someone who's interested in it at at where you live. So like inside your house, and you can just talk about it until like four a.m. and stuff. So yeah, it was enjoyable and. Uh, the same thing to learn about what's happening in crypto was so stressful before nonce. It was kind of overwhelming because there are so many uh, things happening all at once so rapidly. But now that I was in nonce and everyone else is working in crypto, just by chatting like uh, with them, it's just naturally uh, learning about all the stuff. So yeah, it was much, much more enjoyable. And I hope, and I do hope like, it's the communities like NONS do like appear a lot in other different places, not just mm -hmm. in like Seoul or any other country. Okay, okay. So that's a good tip actually for people that want to get involved. Maybe look for a community like that, live there for a while, work there for a while, and really immerse yourself because that's really what you were doing. You know, really yeah, yeah. immerse yourself in the in not just the industry, but even like the culture, and right, right, yeah, just learn learn by being around, you know, right. Um, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, actually, one thing you reminded me about the culture is that we always say like, oh, we should be open, borderless, censorship resistant, and stuff. Yeah. So actually, we did not lock any doors. Which was which was not a good idea, but, yeah. But I guess it's because I, because there were people all the time, so it was a natural security. But yeah. Oh, and actually, I did wanted to uh, mention and show, uh, Colonel. If anyone uh, has heard about Colonel, it's a, I mean, it's a very lovely Web three community. It's basically a cohort based um, educational community. I was in Block 7, which was the last one. And I think they're opening up uh, Block 8 uh, soon enough. And you don't have to be, like, anywhere near expert about uh, crypto. There were many artists who were interested in, in NFT and, like, NGO people uh, interested in DAOs. So, yeah, I think it's a great opportunity to meet, uh, like, people with similar interests. So, yeah, it's... Uh, I can link it uh, in the comment section, but yeah, it's called Kernel. That's great. I'll I can link it. So it's currently loading for me, but somehow the comment section. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Now, okay. but I'll drop the link there in the, in a bit. Um. So yeah, you you actually touch on a great thing. So, like I said at the beginning, you. You've been and you are involved in a lot of initiatives, uh, not just Nooks, not just Nons. Um, can you tell me what what you went on to do after Nons? What what else have you been involved in? Oh, yeah. Um, so actually, 
it's kind of related to NONS, but I was working uh, for a year in NONS operations team. So we were trying to decentralize the operations process and the community itself. And then I got naturally interested in DAOs. Like, because um, there are trials like DAOs before the even like, before even the word DAO came up. Mm. Um, so yeah, I was reading about that and then it only made sense that we uh, study more about DAOs and then I was like huh I couldn't really relate much with DeFi uh, I couldn't really grasp NFT but DAOs I think I understand it and I wanted to like maybe like really bet my life on it so I wanted to travel a little deeper into DAO space so like uh, explore different DAOs like Meta Cartel and oh and if anyone is interested in DAOs as well i highly recommend the uh, rll event called mcon i can also link uh, below um because it's very strange to say this but DAOs are for me something uh, i are in real life because uh, of course the all of the most of the interactions happen in discord and twitter but mm-hmm. the time that i really like clicked or like synced with the community itself was when I actually met the real person behind the voice. So yeah, if anyone is having interest but having a hard time to really connect with DAOs, I recommend doing an IRL event. Right, right, right. Um, Yeah, it's still different, you know, like I, I can relate like the first time it really clicked for me, like this space, I mean, in general, was when I went to like a conference in uh, Amsterdam mm-hmm. um, where I was living. Um, and, you know, one thing is like being in discords and blogs and Twitter, and it's interesting, but purely intellectually almost. And then you go to an actual place with actual people and you see faces and right, you see right. people being excited yeah. and people running around and then, the, oh, I got to go to this event and this, uh, this yes, side yes. event's going on and everybody's trying to get their hands on swag and, you know, you yeah. just, then you really catch the energy and you're like, okay, this is actually cool. And you talk to some people um, and... um yeah, so I, I can fully, I, I fully agree. Like um, in real life events, whenever you can, that's like a great way to enter the space and get more involved. Um, so yeah, yeah, definitely agree. Um, are there any um, in real life events that you would recommend? Because I we talked before and you mentioned one in Tokyo, but you're always, but you're also oh, yeah, working yeah. on one in Seoul, in, uh, in Seoul. Oh, right. Right. Um, so I'm um, part of the, uh, spore down, which is like, a so the spores like, uh, fungus, they travel around, float around and then land and give birth to the next, um, or organ organization. So uh, sport that we try to bridge like Dow West and Dow East and try to onboard more people uh, from Asia to uh, Dow and Web3. Um, can, can everyone hear me? All right. Yeah, I hear you good. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, so we're, we're trying to do a Dow event in Seoul. Uh, we, we're trying to name it Seoul Bound. Uh, I like that. Uh, and uh, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, so it's something like MCON that happens in Denver, but we're trying to bring it to Korea. So it's not going to be like a thousand people event. It will be small, but uh, only with people who can really relate and interested in DAOs. And there's also DAO Tokyo happening at the end of March, which is the cherry blossom time. So we're trying to plan it together so people can visit Dao Tokyo and then next week is Soba. So yeah, anyone anyone is welcome. I'll I'll be preparing and be at the site. So yeah. Let me know. 
You can change change them chain them together. That's really cool. That that's really yeah, cool. Yeah. Just go from one to the next. Okay, so it's it's um it's like a conference, but it's solely focused on DAOs. Oh uh, yeah, and also we're trying to like create some opportunities to actually meet the local community builders in Korea and in Japan. So yeah, gotcha. hopefully come visit. Yes. <laughs> I've shared them in uh, in the comments, actually. So anyone yeah, who, yeah, yeah. who's interested can check them out. Also, they're uh, they're showing up right in the Twitter space under the title. Um, I've I've tagged them as cards, so they're pulled up there. You could just oh, like yeah. flip through them from left to right and back. Right. Um, also the 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 form to claim your x metric is in there by the way i dropped it uh so a little reminder to claim your x metric um okay so i think we're nearing on uh on the end um is there another experience or anything you learned that you still want to share um I can't really, <laughs> I can't really think or pick one right now. So, if there's anything that uh, anyone wants to talk about or ask, maybe. Um, yes, I'd that's love a great. To hear yeah, let's open it up to questions. Um, if anybody has a question, just raise your hand. Just request to be a speaker, and uh, I'll give it to you. Um, let's see. Okay, we got one, Marina. Just come on stage. Hey Marina, how you doing? Hey Twinfin, hey Helix. Thanks for this great Twitter space. Thanks, no worries. I really loved uh, Twinfin hearing about kind of the variety of your experiences and thank you for sharing kind of different things that you maybe picked out from each and how they were how are they gonna um were part of your Web3 journey. That was really great to hear. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> I had a follow-up question. Um, of all of the great communities you mentioned, um, you talked about Kernel a little bit. Um, and they seem to kind of be one of the cool and interesting communities out there. So I was wondering if, you know, if you could share maybe kind of a takeaway or something that really interested you in that community and your experience in the cohort with Kernel. Thanks. Sure, sure. Um, so kernel is basically 100% um, online. But um, so again, I'm, I'm, I'm like emphasizing RLL too much, but you can also meet people um, in different cities. Like so they have initiatives to actually incentivize people to meet. So what I did was I just because they have a big group slack. So I just posted like, Oh, is anyone in Seoul? And then there were like six people in Seoul who are uh, Colonel Fellows and um, in, in the same cohort as me. And then, uh, we, so we just met like like that. And Colonel actually buys, buys us food, but no alcohol. Um, and yeah, you can make great uh, friends there. Um, and I think, it's really hard. It was really hard for me to find um, someone like-minded because like we say uh, it's borderless and the internet is like open, but it's at the same time very hard to find uh, good friends. So I think Colonel, I heard that Colonel has a very, um, very tough um, curation process. I don't know what the criteria are. But like they do read deeply into uh, your intros and stuff. So like the moment you enter, because actually the um, meetings happen in Gather Town or some similar platforms like Gather Town. Uh, but the moment you meet people, like just randomly, you just know that oh, I think I'm gonna have a great conversation with this this person. So yeah, so I do recommend um, writing, uh, app applying. Kernel. And actually, uh, a tip would be to be like, 
show that you really care, like show sincerity. Because like in contrast, like for example, if you're writing to be employed, you wouldn't be writing like everything about yourself, like everything about what you're interested in. But for Colonel, maybe that's that wouldn't be such a bad bad idea. So yeah. Yeah, wow, thank you so much. That's really interesting to hear. Appreciate that. Thank you. Awesome. It, it just goes to show that, you know, at the end of the day, this space is all about communities. Like, it, sometimes it's a bit like a contrast, like technology and the future and, um, you know, decentralization. But at the end of the day, you, you know, we're still like communities and coming together and we want to meet people. And personally, I've also seen how that really accelerates um, your journey into the space. You know, once you start connecting with people, that's when the bar, ball starts rolling. Um, you know, you start helping people. They want you to do more stuff. And it goes from one thing to the next. Um, so, yeah, that's really cool. Um, anybody else got any questions? Um, feel free to raise your hand, uh, request to be a speaker. Um, if no one has a question, I have one in the meantime. Um, you also are doing some stuff for Bankless, uh, Bankless Korea. Um, I'm very curious because I always like listen to the Bankless podcast and I know they had like Bankless DAO and then at some point I saw like all these different Bankless DAOs, like one for every country, um, but I never like really got into it. Like, I'm just curious, like how does it yeah, work? Yeah. Um, yeah, tell us about that. Sure. Um, so I guess it's like a sub DAO kind of um, structure. So Bankless... Mm -hmm. DAO has I, Bankless IMN, which is International Media Node. So under Bankless IMN, so IMN is also a sub -tab. Under there, there are different nodes, like there are Turkish nodes, uh, Russian, uh, Korean, Japanese, and all other, like almost like 20 other different nodes. But I wouldn't say, uh, and they all have different activity levels. And so uh, you can just, if you're country or your other language doesn't have a node yet you can just volunteer to become a node like operator that's that's what me and my friends did uh there was a korean node already but it wasn't doing any anything like there weren't any articles translated or stuff so we just said oh we can start it over again and then they have the minimum um like minimum minimum criteria like at least one article per week that kind of stuff uh and yeah and you can just bootstrap uh your own node and then um accordingly uh, the bankless imn also subsidize you for the work you do like tra translations and stuff so yeah uh, if anyone is interested yeah i encourage you to start because i think the reason why i started bankless korea is because uh, i think it's a good entry point to DAOs. Because when I first looked into DAO space, I was like, hmm, so I want to contribute, but I don't write codes. I don't, like, I'm not a designer. What what can I do? And then the easiest thing that came up to my mind was to translate English articles into Korean. So, yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's one of my trials to, like, pe make people more uh, easily approached to DAOs. So, yes, that's about it okay awesome yeah th that's definitely like a thing like so many people are interested but they don't have technical skills and then it's like okay i'm not a developer i can't do anything but but that's not true there's like so much right, right. to be done in this space um and it's like a great example yeah um actually we had another um question from the audience from carly carly is building Thank you for your question, Carly. Uh, you posted it in the comments. Um, she asked, what are you the most excited about in the next five years? 
Oh, that's a, that's a difficult question. I'm, yeah. I'm, <laughs> so I'm also in, excited about decentralized ID. This is very random, but uh, since I'm traveling around, I have to give uh, my, the photocopies of my passport to all the hostels I stay in, which I really hate. But I guess I don't have any other options. So I'm really waiting for some ZK proof kind of identifiers to come up and save me from the from the mess of photocopying okay. my passports all the time. But yeah, so because like, what what would passports look like in the metaverse? Um, this that's an interesting question, and I don't I don't have an answer to it. So that's one thing, and another thing is. Um, DAOs growing, like uh, quantitatively and also qualitative, qualitatively. Mm -hmm. um, this is also random, but my favorite movie as a child was uh, Ocean's Eleven. Cool. Just because. Oh, actually, I can't. I can't spoil the movie. But yes, yeah, <laughs> <that's, laughs> but yes, um, for me, it's very like DAO related. Uh, if anyone watched it, I think they can make the connection, like with the ending. Um, so yeah, I would love to see. It's it's like a flat, uh, non hierarchical, but really well coordinated um, and loving com community. Uh, right. So yeah, yeah, I see what you so, mean. Yeah, 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 and yeah, I would like to see more of the uh, Ocean's Eleven kind of stuff in this world. So those are the two things I'm interested in excited about yes awesome yeah we we talk a lot about like practical use cases you know and i think this would be a great one for like everybody's traveling i i guess they can relate like not only like, like your idea but your id but also you know having to pay and like credit cards in different countries and then yeah, right. uh, it's not verified or validated in another country or they they don't accept your uh your mastercard or or they only yeah. accept fees right, right, uh, right. uh et cetera, et cetera, right um there's like definitely opportunities there to like streamline stuff and make just life easier for everybody in the world hopefully um, and, and this is actually a mm -hmm. great one. It's very interesting. All right. Um, thank you for that question, Carly. Thanks for participating. Be sure to play next metric. Um, yeah, and that goes for everyone. Be sure to claim your X metric. We're dropping 25 X metric for everyone. For people that don't know, X metric is basically our reputation token is the way that we track your reputation in the metrics DAO community and basically the more x metric you have the more you can do within uh, mdao for example you get access to bounties or if you get even more you can become a peer reviewer etc etc so be sure to claim your uh, x metric it adds up um it's uh the the form is in the comments um and within the cards that you can flip through it's the second one right now um and yeah um okay what else um before you leave i want to let you know that uh tomorrow we have a demo with set block so if you want to keep learning and uh learn more about the space but also the the tools that you could add to your stack. Um, Set a block is uh, doing some cool stuff. They've been with us before and they've kept building. So we're going to check in on their progress tomorrow. Um, I'll drop the uh, YouTube link in the comments as well. Um, then next week we have an other demo, uh, probably with Fairpool. Um, so I cannot tell you too much about that, but uh, just know we, that we have uh, more coming next week. Um, so keep an eye on our uh, com on our um, announcements. I'm sorry, you can do that either in Discord or on Twitter. Um, and in the Discord, you can keep an eye on our events tab or the announcements channel, for example. 
um, and you'll um, stay updated on everything that we have going on, not just events, but we always have stuff going on. For example, we also have the live course going on right now. Um, if you didn't sign up yet, I'm sorry, you're out of luck. <laughs> but still hope for you because uh, we got another one launching in January. Uh, basically, this one was such a success and there was such a high demand for it that we decided to just keep doing it. Um, and the next one will be improved. Uh, we might have different speakers. Of course, you know, as you do, you learn. And the same goes for us at Metric Style. So we keep improving our content as well. Um, let's see. I'm dropping the the link in the comments right now. So you should have it right there. Um, and you can sign up for the January course. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, I want to thank everybody for being here. Uh, thanks for participating. Thank you, um, everyone. Yeah, thank you, Carly, for, for your question. Marina as well. Um, if you guys want to get more involved with Metric Style, I'm dropping the link to our Discord in the comments. Um, so if you're not there yet, be sure to, sure to join us there. Um, and of course, I want to thank our guest, Swim Finn. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Um, we had a pretty interesting talk. It's pretty amazing to see like your journey and your thought process and the just the amount of stuff that you're doing is inspiring um you got so much going on uh and i think it's really a testament to you know if if people want to enter this space it's like totally doable like there's so many opportunities like you show that um and yeah, I want to thank you for being here today and sharing that with us. Um, where can people Thanks find you, actually, yeah. if uh, if they want to follow you, if they want to connect with oh. you, maybe they want to ask you some questions? Oh, uh, yeah, you can just send me DM, I guess. If Twitter okay. is okay. Yeah. So that's twin, uh, at twinfin22, right? Yes, because it's twinfin. Twin fin. All right. Um, also dropping that link in the comments. Um, yeah, so that's it. Uh, everybody who's, who is here, even after the uh, Twitter space uh, ends, you can still enter the comments and check out all the links. So don't worry about that. Um, we'll be closing the form for the X metrics claim in a little bit. So if you want to claim it, be sure to do it now. Um, and we'll upload uh, the recording to YouTube as well. So you can find it on Twitter and YouTube. So that's it, everyone. Once again, thank you, Twin Finn, for being here. And thanks, everyone in the audience, for being here as well. Um, see you all next time. Thanks for having me. See you all. Bye. Yay, let's keep it up.